July 28, 2022, Board of Selectmen meeting voted against virtual and nursing. We're going to see today from the owner of the Board of Selectmen here. So, um, different venue for us, but uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a great meeting. And as always, we will start the meeting with a pleasure of leaving. Under liberty and justice for all. Can you speak a little the the microphone? Yeah, they are. So if you can speak right into the microphone, because hopefully that'll bring the sound into the room yes. more. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion to approve the meeting the special meeting of July 12th? Foreign reading, so moved. Janet Stone McKeegan, I second. All those in favor, Rebecca Knowles, yes. Foreign reading, yes. Janet Stone McKeegan, yes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of July 14th, 2020? Warren Raven, so moved. Janet Stone McQuiggan, I second. All in favor, Rebecca Knowles, yes. Warren Raven, yes. Janet Stone McQuiggan, yes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting of July 18th, 2020? Warren Raven, so moved. Janet Stone McQuiggan, I second. Fred, I don't think your mic is on or something. Uh, uh, you need uh, to bring it closer. Uh, unfortunately, we can't. Okay, I'm sorry. Very good. Is there a motion to approve the minutes for the special meeting of July 20th, 2022? Lauren Reagan, so moved. Janet Stomach, we can I second. All those in favor, if I can close, yes. Lauren Reagan, yes. Janet Stomach, we can, yes. Okay, we'll go right on, on to the first selections updates. Hopefully, yes. Um, I've been updating people out of uh, the Army Corps of Engineers of uh, the flooding issue. We um, uh, received, hopefully, of the 35 million project on the Byron River. Um, they're going to be widening the post road, the bridges there. Some of us are concerned about choke points up the river further in and toward uh, Greenwich. So I'm going to be meeting with them and some elected officials who uh, represent that district up to the state house and the RTM on August 10th, just to so they understand our concerns. So when we're doing this project, uh, we look at every possible thing that has going on. And unfortunately, that's been flooding since at least 1955. So we want to finally get this put to bed. And we also put money in the budget for the flooding coming from the Network Park area of the farm. So uh, we're eager to meet with them, and they've been really great to work with. I also met with uh, Westchester County Executive George Latimer a few times, and we're going to be have the estimate that they would have a public forum about the airport expansion. Uh, they people they get the wrong idea. Uh, you, you really can't expand the airport, there's not any land there, but people see work being done there, a lot of the neighbors, and they get upset. So uh, we asked them, they have some plans there. We asked them if they would have a public forum in Greenwich, since a lot of people in Greenwich use it, and a lot of people in Greenwich live right there on the border. So George was great, and uh, Barbara and I were working with them to uh, to set up a, a forum that will be a public forum in Greenwich in mid September. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I was re recently appointed to the board of Connecticut County the Municipality (CCM), and I was nominated to be vice chair of the Land Use Committee, which is very very important uh, when we're considering all of these mandates that are coming down from Hartford, especially 8-30G. And uh, especially with the flooding I just mentioned, that's uh, it's a very, very important uh, issue. So I certainly will be not only uh, giving Pleasure Greenwich's perspective out there, but also uh, defending the other towns in the state that really are, uh, are under assault from our um, mandates. Uh, again, on Tuesday, we did a proclamation uh, for the EPA. It was the 32nd anniversary since President Bush signed into law. We did it at the brand new Greenwich Cardinal Stadium. It was a fun day. Uh, beautiful, what uh, they've done there. Um, thanks to the Joe Kelly and the committee, uh, all of the departments that worked on that, uh, all of the volunteers. But it's a great state. It's not done yet, but uh, it's certainly a very ADA compliant and inclusive. But it's a, it's a one, two, 
much. It's not just compliant but it's inclusivity. Uh, we have a bike force, bike task force uh, update. Um, yesterday I was in a whole meeting, but uh, have been meeting with the Stanford people and Mayor Simmons on some joint projects, including a dog park on the eastern part of town um, with Stanford, but also uh, connecting Stanford to Greenwich with a bike group. But now we've got the Garwa people involved and trying to get their hands. So now this bike might make it a little wider. So it's not the easiest thing to do because you're sharing the road with cars and it can be very dangerous. It's not like hiking, which I do a lot of or off the road, but we want to make a commitment to, you know, we're encouraging people to be as active as ever, but we want people to do it safely. So um, that's the toughest one we have because it's, it's just not a guarantee because you want people to be distracted with phone. So we're going to try and get a nice route out there and publicize it so people can, can know where it is and to get out there safely and on the bikes. Um, the, 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 the rank, uh, we're going to, we're going to be making a couple of announcements shortly about the short term and long term plans for that rank. It's exciting. I think people will be very happy with uh, uh, the progress that's being made there. Was opening up an acupuncture uh, office at uh, Melrose, Ave uh, Melrose Avenue in Greenwich. So that's uh, we're looking forward to that. There's also another one on the 8th, which is Wildfire, which is three in Costco. It's the old Starbucks. We'll be doing a really fun there. And we wish them well. And we uh, some other things, but uh, I'm still going to be So anyway, that's enough for me. So uh, we'll go left today. And Turn over to Janet for her updates. Thank you, Fred. Um, well, I'll begin because I know that the American Red Cross is in need of blood donors. Um, I believe on August 1st, there will be a blood drive at Temple Shalom. And I got it from a reliable source that brie and deviled eggs will be on offer. Um, and then another, let's call it amusing. Um, I'm so happy that last week's heat wave is over. Um, I can't help but think about climate change when we, when we experience that kind of weather. Um, and just like I forever try to diet over this summer, I'm thinking about a climate, climate diet challenge for, for myself and maybe I'll propose it to others. Um, I think we can do a lot to help, to help our, our earth, and at the same time, maybe save some money. Um, I know, for instance, here's a public service announcement. If you don't set your temperature more than um, 10 degrees below outside temperature, your air conditioner will, will run much more efficiently. Um, I think that will save you some money. And, and I'm also thinking that what a good way to take that savings and um, contribute to your favorite charity in town, because I know that they also they're in need of help this summer, so thank you, and that's it for me. Thanks, Jane. I'm from the cold. So we have more. more. Um, so last week uh, attended the um, NPO and West Cog meeting. You can't hear me. Please. Now I can. Thank you. You have to like be like have within to an do. inch of the microphone. Yeah. All right. Uh, so one of the things that got approved from the um, LATSIP program was um, additional funding for the adaptive signaling in Greenwich on Route 1. And everyone, I hope they um, think, is aware of the adaptive signaling that we were able to install at Park Street and the intersections near 95. So that should be 
each difference. We also had a presentation by a company um, by the name of Entry Point. Their whole concept was about localities getting into um, being service providers for internet services and um, broadband services. Interesting, and the concept is to compete with the bios. Um, it was a presentation. Uh, next Tuesday, we're going to have our first Central Middle School Building Committee meeting, so I'll have more to report out on that. Yesterday, I had an affordable housing task force meeting. Um, I announced before that I'm on the subcommittee to look at uh, town properties to see if there's anything that jumps out uh, to be um, a development for affordable housing. So we're just starting that process. We are also in need of somebody to join the task force that has fundraising experience. We have yet to find um, a person. So I'm making a plug if that's something that our community or someone in the community might be interested in a passion for fundraising, a passion for affordable housing, you know, definitely reach out. Um, actually just had a meeting today with the friends of the senior center. And they too are looking to reconstitute their board. So looking for some suggestions um, on board members there. And their immediate need is they have a commitment to help fund um, the renovation that's going on at the senior center. So an immediate need to contribute some funds uh, towards that um, appeal. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, and those are the adaptive signals that we have down on Arch Street. We're the first in the state of Connecticut. And if you come off the highway there, you know it's a lot quicker now, and cars aren't idling as much, and there's no car traffic coming the light turn. So we would love to see that and it's in the spot. So that's all exciting news. Um, going at full business, uh, we will be again the um, permit lane, which we're still working on that the DPW, contacting the uh, residents over there. So um, that is not forgotten. It's just uh, uh, not through everything yet. It's probably going to be that way if I can find another month or so. Uh, it's, it's August and uh, Jim, Michael's, uh, Jim Michael's away on vacation. Um, next up, we have, uh, we have two, two items, so we should have put you a second, but um, it's staying on here. So we have a request for a town declaration of a climate emergency. This is the second read. Um, I have. Uh, the newest revision here. Thank you for sending it. Um, and then Harry sent in another one that he uh, wanted to have us look at. You know, I looked, just went over it last night before my meetings, and they're very similar, I thought. Um, some of the things I liked, some of the things I preferred in the original version here. Um, but I did do my homework too, and I reached out to uh, see if we can make it even stronger. And I reached out to uh, J. Domasek at the and I asked, is there any way we can get some real numbers, say 25% of our fleet uh, electric by, say, 2028? I just threw some numbers up there to see what we would say. And he said, Fred, I guess I would do it in a second. He said, but the technology is not there with vehicles because in a snowstorm or a weather event where they need the trucks running, they can't afford to have off the road charging for an hour. And so he said, they're not there yet with that. So I said, okay, so well, as soon as they are, we'll certainly put in for it. But um, I did put two uh, requests for two electric vehicles for cars in our fleet. Um, the BET Cup one, but we'll, we'll work with them. So we have one coming and then we'll, we'll have to put some more in the, in the budget again coming up. But he did tell me I think 35% of our fleet uh, trucks are now uh, powered by propane, which is good, which is very good. So uh, fleet, it, you know, they don't get any credit for this, but the town is working towards this and may not be as fast as some people like, but, but certainly uh, they're working really hard. And it's not like they can snap their finger, but there's a process and so it's up to prove that it's needed and hopefully it won't well be coming. But all good news with the fleet, um, but again, we're, we'll put it to more vehicles. Uh, Cars uh, in the coming budget. We'll see what happens. But the trucks just not there yet. So there was no sense putting numbers in there that we can't achieve right now. But we have no way of knowing. And I also want to thank his 
know when I reached out to you uh, and your colleagues about the last paragraph where I, there was some numbers in there and I said, look, they look great, but I don't know if French can achieve them without any more information. And I don't want to overpromise and under deliver. And you were, you were good to, to amend that. So thank, thank you very much. But um, any questions at all? Oh, I, I have been out of town for a couple of days and I now have three versions. So one was um, on the 24th, I think one's on the 26th and one's on the 27th. And I'm trying to reconcile them where the words are different. I personally need a little more time to like reconcile the, the three different formats. Um, one of the things I know I talked to Isabel when I first met you was about connecting things to the POC. So I want to make sure that all of our <coughs> documents and ideas are um, connected so that we're having a consistent way that we're approaching things. <coughs> and to your point about metrics, um, we haven't come in front of the board selecting yet, but I'm on a subcommittee that's working on KPIs for the POCD. Ken, you wrote about it over a year ago. That's how long it's taking us. But we um, went from the planning and zoning and got their feedback and we just be the real data and it should be coming in front of the board soon. Dan Carlson and uh, Ben Brannion and uh, Katie Ruga and myself have been um, forming this committee. And there's things in there that I think can lend itself to this document. So one thing is about goals for residential production and water use, for example. Another one is you know open space, how much open space. We had a speaker come before us two weeks ago about, I'm sorry, I feel like I have to kiss the thing. No. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to do that. Right <laughs> um, come before us about you know bus ridership. And, and interestingly enough, that's one of our KPIs. So some of these, all these ideas in my head are are um, aligned. And it just how do we how do we align them in a document? So that that's what I hope we can do for the final you know conclusion of what we're trying to. Thank, thank you. Uh, I, I agree. I mean, just an example of um, the Harry's version that was sent over. Uh, this in the first paragraph where it says, whereas Town of Grange has experienced severe weather events, including harsh storms, drought, and density, which the original, your version has, have resulted in increased risk. This says can. I would prefer to have it because it's pretty clear that they have resulted in it. So, I mean, that's something that I, I, would, I would personally prefer to refer to. First version, um, but there's some other things here that I think are pretty good. And I, um, but we're probably, I think, probably the good, thing, the best thing to do is for us in the executive session to go over this, and then so the three of us can, can match everything up and see what we like and make this strong, the strongest possible document going. So I think we have the information here. Um, and another great uh, product of this is that we put this front and center. So now this is getting a lot of. Talk and people, some people may not even, you know, wasn't even on the radar when they were spoken about. Now they are, they're weighing in. And what I've always said from the beginning is I don't want to hear no. I just want to hear what's, what, why no, what's better? Give me a different solution. So um, this is democracy. This is a good thing. And we're going to, we're going to, I'm fairly confident in two weeks we're going to have a really good uh, resolution to vote on. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Speaker Santi. So, um, anyway, I'll let, uh, turn it over to Janet, but I'm um, very encouraged by this. And so, I think uh, even your first version there, you really tailored this to to a local level, which is, I think, what most people wanted. And, uh, you know, hats off to you. Uh, so, I'm going to echo that. Um, I'm just going to say I am so impressed with um, the student writers, um, leadership, intelligence, maturity, poise. Thank you so much. We talk about how we need to be role models for our youth, but in this case, our youth are role models for us. So really, thank you very much. I have to say, I only, I, I looked, saw the uh, uh, alternate resolution exactly one minute before this meeting. So I, I can't speak to that. Um, I'm happy, yes, if, if an executive session would help us, um, I'm all for that. Um, I, I prefer, though, in this in this instance, I'd rather have the, the drafters speak to um, 
speak to anything that they want to today. Um, I will say that what you're talking about, the numbers and the changes, those are in the whereas clauses as opposed to the operational clauses. Um, yeah, so I want to I want to focus on the operational clauses, but I do know just as a as a principle, I know that our energy management advisory committee and our planning and zoning commission they prefer looking at outcomes as opposed to prescriptions. And so, you know, some of some of the ideas that um, were just floated are are more prescriptive, and I think it gives the town a, a lot more flexibility when you look at the outcome and not, you know, not specific um, recommendations. And I think that, that the current resolution does that. And, you know, so, so well done. Yes, well, well done. And we'll get to the speakers we want to hear from you guys. So first up, we have Julie. And, and all speakers, please note that you have a three minute time limit and You'll need to actually hold the microphone that's up in the dais to speak into it so that our audio will pick it up and just state your name as well for the record. Thank you. Hi, I'm Julie Deschamps. Um, every day I read about the devastating effects worldwide of a warming planet but I don't need to look far to see those impacts firsthand. We are experiencing them in our own community right now. Just yesterday, there was an air quality alert for elevated ozone and particle pollution in Fairfield County. A heat wave last week necessitated the opening of cooling stations. There are streets and basements of homes and schools flooded with water and sewage. Beach closures due to high bacterial counts an uptick in mosquito-borne diseases, trees devastated by disease. As temperatures continue to climb in Greenwich, these effects will only grow in frequency and intensity. Climate change is here and now. Our neighboring municipalities have acknowledged this fact, and they plan for climate resilience over the last decade. But Greenwich is behind the curve. Where is our greenhouse gas inventory? What is our baseline? Where is our climate action plan? What are our goals to mitigate carbon emissions? If we don't know where we are, we don't know where we're going. We can and do, must do better. We need a baseline assessment of greenhouse gas emissions across sectors, specific obje uh, objectives, and a comprehensive plan of how to implement and track these actions. A willy-nilly, uncoordinated approach doesn't cut it. And we need to go way beyond mandating that our schools take the school bus, students take the school bus. We need to act now for our health, economy, and environment. And that starts with a strong resolution on climate change based on scientific consensus and fact. Yet the debate around this resolution is marred by hubris and climate change denial. It's a slap in the face to our youth who inherit these problems and are asking for climate action now and an acknowledgement that climate change is real and a crisis. According to a University of Chicago poll, only 13% of Americans are climate deniers. Are we going to let the deniers, the slim majority minority, chart our course? Or will we follow the experts? Experts like NASA, the American Medical Association, the American Neurolog Meteorological Society, National Academy of Sciences, American Lung Association, and the, the IPCC, and hundreds of other scientific bodies in our country and around the world. Surely not all of them can be wrong. In his rebuke of climate denial, Pope Francis stated, quote, they speak very clearly. Scientists are precise. We can see the effects of climate change and scientists clearly say what path we should follow. It's time we in Greenwich follow that path. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
as some of you may know, that I'm pretty active in uh, chastising rhetoric and not being more aggressive in climate change uh, policies. Can so, you hold the mic? Delighted, delighted to, to see that the uh, students have come up with a resolution they have. And one of the things I've noted in the last of the resolution here, which I hope can stay in the resolution, is the one that we, the town of Greenwich, uh, develops a sustainability climate resiliency plan and that includes strategies. And the strategies, that's where I, I have a little problem, Janet, when you talk about prescriptions or uh, outcomes. And one of the points I've made consistently in the comments I've made is that we want an outcome of new buildings to be net zero energy. Now, is that prescriptive or is that an outcome? I think so uh, I'm a little little concerned about getting uh, last minute resolutions, and I wonder if that's going to continue. Can we have additional resolutions that need to be considered, or can we set a deadline to know we're going to vote? Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I'll, I'll answer that. Um, we do, we have a cutoff date for these things, and um, we re even received the latest. The latest one, I think, on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. So that was even. You know, Really, just that didn't even. And then last night. And last night. So the last two versions were both, both were not meeting. But we're we're going to hit with this. But I agree with you. I don't want that. I would question people from getting another resolution because um, it looks like it's just trying to obstruct and slow the clock. That's we're, we're going to vote on this in two weeks. So I will uh, give you my word. I think my colleagues want to get something done too. So I do appreciate the last two, Harry and both of them. Sue, thank you so much for doing it. They're great, um, but again, it's. I think we have enough information here now. So thank you, Steve. Next up, we have Isabel. Hi, I'm Isabel, um, and I just want to thank you guys so much for considering this uh, resolution and for putting all your input into it. And I'm sorry again for for submitting the last version of it some way, but we just really like, we just wanted to get everybody's input. We wanted to make sure that everybody on all sides, um, they just like what was in there so that we can get a comprehensive and very bipartisan document. And I think uh, you, you were talking about the KPIs and the POCD, and you were talking about the fleet and all, and all the potential um, goals that we could put into the resolution. But I think that um, for this resolution, like what we want to do is just get the commitment to making an action plan in there so then we can add all of those things to the actual action plan so i think like keeping it like concise to just this and just the action plan and the commitment to that is enough so that then we can work and on the actual plan and then we can put all those goals in there and if we have that be like another conversation so that you know first we can just get this this done um and and yeah i, I mean Obviously, I think climate change is such a huge issue, but I think no municipality, no matter how sheltered they might be, is immune to the impacts of climate change. And, and I think that it's just so important to make any like sustainability and resiliency plan or climate action plan, um, whatever you want to call it, uh, for any town, because there's always going to be something that it's going to affect. And I just want to thank everybody, uh, Harry and, and everybody, for coming here, and, and I thank you for uh, submitting that climate resolution. I think it's really good to hear from both sides, and I really like that everybody is, no matter what your ideology may be and what you may think about um, climate change. I really like that everybody is in this room and everybody is contributing, and so I just want to commend everybody for that. And I really hope that this like sustainability and resilience plan does stay in there. Because that's really like the, the main thing in it. That's like the, the teeth of the whole resolution. And so that we can work all together once this is passed, hopefully, to uh, to make that and to make that a reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Isabel. In a time where people can be uncivil, uh, adults uh, all around the country and the world, um, people just love that the example that you and your colleagues uh, uh, set here. And that meeting we ran the other day, um, 
you know, that's something that maybe should be passed around to everybody in all town. I mean, it's you're very inclusive, you listen, right? You listen to all sides. And that's the key. When we met early on, we said that you presented there, no matter what you present, no matter who presents it, people are gonna have comments on it and you never get a hundred percent of that, but you have a goal, and I think you're right to have that plan in place where we can fill in the blanks and maybe like meeting with once we get this done you know, departments like fleet and environmental affairs and seeing exactly what can we do. And Jay Domasek is really good at fleet and he actually can give us some, some good goals there that we can meet. And maybe you can be a little aggressive and shoot for here knowing that here would be great too. Um, it's the Vince Lombardi, the great football coach once said, you always shoot for perfection. You're never gonna attain it. But along the way, you may catch excellence. So you shoot high. And I think that's what we do. But you're, you're right not to get too bogged down in numbers at this point. You just get the time. So, get said, said any guys. So thank you. Thanks, Bethany. I'm Myra. Can I just um, offer? So, I think the sentence could say a plan inconsistent, you know, being consistent with the POCD. So, I, I was giving examples because I don't want the documents to not be. Late, because we can't go off in one area defining and doing things and have another thing that isn't connected. That that's my point. Not necessarily with this specific goal there, but there's other work that have taken years, and people in the community have contributed towards. So we can't dismiss them. Good point. All right. Um. My name is Myra Klackenbrink, and I am the mentor, process mentor to the students. I've helped uh, usher them through this entire process. And uh, for the record, I would like to say that um, we held a meeting on Thursday, um, July 21st, at the first selection's request that we get members. Uh, representatives from every government entity in a room to discuss this climate resolution. And that meeting took place and it took two hours and every single paragraph was reviewed and a new draft was issued to the first selectman and he had some responses to it. Um, this was based on everyone's input. He had some responses to it. Those responses were taken and, and, and a further amendment was made. And that was what was presented to you by Isabel um, two days ago at your request. Um, and so we uh, have had an open and transparent process throughout this entire thing. And I find that having a new resolution brought up at the 11th hour at a meeting like this uh, is patently unfair to the process um, and should not have happened. Um, that resolution, Mr. Fisher's resolution should have been brought forward to us as he was part of that initial invite. Um, actually that, meeting was scheduled at the convenience of Mr. Dan Ozesmir, who ended up not coming and I think Mr. Fisher was sent in his stead. So we have included everyone. We've had an open, honest process and we would like it, this final resolution that will be voted on apparently now two weeks forward to be open and honest as well. Thank you. Thank you. I take exception to that. It's been open and honest. If you're accusing people of being dishonest, then you need to apologize to everybody. Because that I'm was a, that was a true shot. I'm not accusing anyone of being this. dishonest. You I'm saying did. that we have been honest yeah. well, and no, open. Yeah. Well, and you know, the inference was there, and, and I take offense to that. So, uh, I think and, you know, and, and you know, there's been some letters to the editor. One I really thought was really good. But uh, an RTM member was signed up here to speak, uh, made a false statement, and the first slide went flatly rejected. This that never happens. It never happened. 
and I really resent some adults making this political. Harry, you're up. Uh, Harry Fisher, while I'm a member of the BET, I'm here. Sorry, I thought my voice was going to carry into it. But, um, while I'm a member of the BT and on the Energy Management Advisory Committee for Fred, I'm really here as an individual. And yes, I did participate in the video, uh, the Zoom meeting last Thursday in place of Dan, whose travel plans changed and he was on an airplane at the time of the meeting. Um, I want to I, I want to just clarify that you know the word climate denier has been used here. I think that that term ought to be excised. Um, I'm not a climate denier. I believe that climate change has been changing. Climate has been changing for millions, thousands, hundreds of years. The uh, the real question on the table is is twofold. One is you know how can we ever quantify the impact of humans? Sure, humans are going to have some impact on it, but you know the, the the narrative out there that it's all humans' fault, I think, is is really uh, uh, not not justified. I think it's also important not to conflate weather and climate. The events of last week's weather was just weather; it was a weather event. Um, hurricanes are weather events. Um, the statistics about the um, hurricanes hitting the Northeast, you know, we've actually seen relatively quiet um, activity in recorded history in the last 10 years. I would also point out that this summer, the Arctic ice is, is at a high relative to its level of the last 10 years. So there are, you know, there's a lot of noise out there from the media about weather events, the hot temperatures in Europe. And, you know, I think we really have to reduce the stand to just you know, not getting hung up on those weather events. Um, my effort, you know, I'm sorry it was last minute, but I didn't get resolutions until the 24th and 26th. Um, the 26th I only got in, in the media, um, but I really felt that, you know, an alternative resolution was really called for. Um, and, you know, I'm sorry it didn't get presented, but, you know, it, I did the best I could in the context of my work and my other duties. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it's well received. It seems like it is by the board. And I look forward to trying to work towards the, uh, a vote for a good compromise in two weeks. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate your uh, joining us. And next up, we have Alex Rodriguez from New Haven. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Rodriguez with Save the Sound. And uh, you know, in my remarks today, I'd just like to uh, I'd like to uh, you know paint uh, a picture of where I'm at and why I support the resolution submitted by the Greenwich Environmental Action Sustainability Committee. Sorry about that. So about a year ago, uh, um, or really as part of my job title at Save the Sound, uh, I am dedicated to building the capacity of young people to tackling environmental problems. I want to build the capacity of young people to tackle the climate emergency uh, that befalls us each and every day. And that will worsen uh, because of a decades, centuries long dependence on fossil fuels. Fossil fuel burning resources contribute to global warming, which thereby alters the climate. It, it indeed alters weather, but it, it alters our climate. And uh, some people suffer more from it than others. Um, where this fits in with uh, our work at Save the Sound. Greenwich is uh, one coastal community that we admire very much and uh, is, long, is a long line uh, in Sound. And, uh, and the youth came to us from, from Greenwich seeking support for the resolution uh, that, that their group was putting forward. And uh, we endorsed it. And, and Isabel spoke on our uh, Young Environmental Leaders Storytelling webinar 
and she did a phenomenal job. I think that young people uh, like Isabel and like my climate policy intern, Nicole, who is also a Greenwich resident, are uh, the leaders of our future. And I, uh, I would implore uh, Board of Selectmen uh, to uh, pass this resolution, uh, whether it be today or two weeks from now. I think there are a variety of tactics uh, regarding waste, regarding energy reduction, uh, that would do uh, the proposed uh, climate um, and sustainability plan item at, at, towards the end of the resolution. I think that would do it justice and uh, to uh, select woman uh, select woman Raven's uh, suggestion, uh, you know, aligning that with the POCD. I think that sounds. Um, I think that I think that this resolution is the first step in a wider conversation. And uh, I hope that in that sustainability plan, there is an intention uh, to reach net zero emissions by the end of the decade, uh, because we must adhere to the science if we don't want to forsake our futures. And so uh, I implore you to support the resolution uh, submitted by the leading climate advocates in this town. And I thank you for your time today. Thank you for coming down and for all your work with working with the youth. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Nicole. Greenwich resident, Alex. Alex, hi. Morning, Nicole. State your name. Hello, good morning. Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Freitas, and I'm here today again to express my utmost support on the resolution that the Environmental Advocacy Group has put forward for the board of to approve. And my hope is that this resolution will pull Greenwich in the direction of a sustainable future. The efforts that have been made in our community to support environmental protection in the last few years, such as including one electric vehicle in our fleet and creating a sustainability committee and energy management advisory committee, illustrates the community support for climate action. And I think that we must use this resolution to further our adaptation and mitigation plans and to make tangible actions to preserve the Greenwich community against climate change. And on July 15th, the Greenwich Conservation Commission published a news flash on our town's website stating that Governor Lamont declared that all eight counties are experiencing stage two drought conditions due to below normal precipitation levels across the state. The article states that Connecticut is experiencing a major and emerging drought event for which we must take steps to mitigate the potential harms and impacts our agriculture systems and water supply. And although we have modified the name of this resolution to exclude emergency, this news illustrates that scientists declaring climate change as an emergency are not far off. And we must take action with the, re the resources we have to remedy and prevent the influx and intensity of droughts, heat waves, flooding, and other impacts of climate change that is expected to to come. And I appreciate the inclusion of the development of a sustainability and climate resiliency plan by December 2023 in the resolution, because I think that's exactly what the point of this is for, to help these plans, um, Greenwich establish a green task force to compose of the leaders of the town and those who advocate and communicate the mission to town staff or uh, legislators and budget officials and residents and even businesses. So as a young Greenwich resident, I just want to urge the Board of Selectmen to adopt this resolution to recognize the challenges and address them that are presented by a rapidly changing climate. And I urge you to acknowledge this crucial step to ensure that Greenwich is taking action to support its community. And uh, the resolution will elevate the urgency to take responsibility and to protect our community from climate change. So on behalf of Greenwich and Safe the Sound, I want to urge you to vote yes on adopting this resolution and supporting local action. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you so much, Nicole. Much appreciated. And we have one more speaker. I don't know if it's virtual. It's, um, oh, Andrew Winston. Did he raise his hand? Yeah. You, can you elevate him? Yep, I'm gonna, um, so maybe Lauren can tilt her screen over so you can see I, I'm promoting him. And then I'm going to uh, ask him to uh, oh, hold on. Mr. Winston is the final speaker. 
Yeah, so if uh, if he could please unmute himself and turn on okay. his video. Mr. Winston, can you unmute yourself? And it'll the sound will come out of here, but um, okay. can you start your video or? It says it's unable to, I'm not sure why. Oh, okay, I apologize here, let me do this, sorry. Okay. Um, oh, no, no, hold on. Um, Give me one second. There we go. Okay, you should be able to do it now. Okay, great. Um, yeah, we could put a mic. All right. Well, I'll I'll just I I'm hitting start video, but if it doesn't work, if it's okay, I'll just uh, I'll just speak. So not to take too much time. If you can't hear me, please let me know. Yeah, I don't go think. Ahead. They, yep. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak virtually. Thank you for allowing the, the flexibility of the vir virtual meeting. And thank you to the Board of Selectmen um, and Women for considering this statement from the, the students who I think have um, shown us how to, how to do this, frankly. So I, I, we've heard, I think, some things about the, um, the science. I don't want to really dig into that too much. I work with multinationals. I've worked for 20 years on the overlap of business and environment. Um, I help multinationals make their businesses more sustainable with a really heavy focus on climate change. So I just wanted to add a little bit of perspective from the private sector, because I think we can, we can learn a lot about what's, what's possible. And especially since I know there's been concerns and alternate, resolution, you know, alternate resolutions, and we heard some concerns earlier about the science. Um, and consistently, I've heard concerns about the cost of, of taking action. So, I just wanted to quickly cite um, one, one corporate CEO. Um, this is their public statement. We understand the tremendous challenge represented by climate change and have fully supported the Paris Agreement since its inception. We believe a price on carbon emissions is essential to achieving net zero emissions. We have great respect for policymakers, elected officials, and organizations across the political spectrum who are grappling to effectively address climate change, one of the greatest challenges of our time. That's Darren Woods, who's the chairman and CEO of ExxonMobil. There is not a large company in the world that is debating this. Um, the, frankly, um, the perspective we heard earlier on climate versus weather is, is really not on the spectrum of scientific consensus. It's not remotely in line with what all major corporations support today. We are very much an emergency and companies are moving very quickly. And so I would just suggest if we can get this passed and we get to some of the details that even the, the departments in the town may not be fully aware of what's, what's possible technologically. The, the technologies for moving the town and moving a company towards sustainability have gotten radically cheaper in the last decade. Renewables, batteries, and many others are down 70 to 90%. They are in fact cheaper. And it's why the largest companies are setting the kinds of targets they are. So on the example of trucks and large vehicles, FedEx is going to buy half of all their new vehicles will be EVs in a couple of years. They'll buy only EVs by 2030 and they will only be driving EVs by 2040. And that's actually behind what most of the major auto companies around the world are committing to. So the technologies are there, they're developing very fast, they're getting cheaper all the time. And actually I think it's, it becomes fiscally irresponsible to not take action. Our, our costs will be lower in the town, air quality will be better, and we're going to build more resilience in the face of increasingly extreme weather, which there will be. Uh, this is only good news for the town. And so I encourage us to pass this as fast as we can. Thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. Um, thanks. Um, yeah, and again, I, I spoke to uh, Jay Thomas. He did it, and, and he looks to this all the time. Um, he said the technology is not there, right? Those big vehicles, and during the weather event, we just don't have the capacity to have the trucks on the road charging for an hour. But uh, as they, uh, the hope is, as, tech, as more of these companies do it, technology will improve. Um, it always does, which is great. And I, you know, with that, I'd love to get some numbers in there. And both set some goals there with the active plan, but with the active plan first, but we definitely need to have target goals there. So working with the scores. We do some stuff that I did. I think probably not from the board of PET, RGM, Green, Energy Advocates, uh, all the Amber and they go into a room together on these things. In the last two and a half years, when we were running, we said uh, we wanted to put to, together a sustainability committee. We've done that. We, we wanted an energy management advisory committee. 
we've done that. They're doing some really good work. Uh, we've increased recycling here in town in the last two and a half years. But uh, with the tipping fee, uh, we, we now have to pay for recycling. We've got that in 2020. Garbage production down. Why? Because people don't want to pay for that. So they're recycling more, which is great. Um, there's still, we've added, you know, added textiles uh, to, the, to the mix. We've added uh, uh, food scraps. I'd love to get some more things done there. But little by little, uh, I've been a big recycler. I've been, was in the recycling business and a volunteer since 1989 um, and passed some laws in Hartford when I was there uh, for recycling. So uh, it means a lot to me. So I think this is actually a really good idea to maybe have a green task force to split off the different departments and components of it. And one being, say, recycling, and one being maybe energy, alternative energy resources. So um, we're, we're, uh, we're going in the right direction. And I know it's sometimes uh, coming from the private sector that we all get frustrated with the pace of government. Um, but it, I guess it's for a reason. It's, it's, it's bad in the sense that good ideas take a little bit longer, um, but it's good in the sense that bad ideas get more scrutiny. So it, it kind of uh, you know balances out. So we'll actually go over this. Uh, I think you did a tremendous job, and Harry, thank you. This is this is good, and we'll, we'll work on this in the next two weeks, and we'll have a vote there. And I caution people if you know about from now. I think we have what we need here. Now we don't really need any more resolutions, but. Can't stop anybody from putting something in, but we will be voting in two weeks. So, thank you very, very, very much. Appreciate it. All right. Now, we have been waiting patiently. Okay. Um. I'm just here. To, uh, I proposed it on the first week, two weeks ago. I'm here to address any questions that you might have um, regarding the first uh, post amendment to the challenge for regarding um, the permit uh, late fee, making it um, one late fee, making it um, the month of December very clear, very concise, eliminate confusion, and also clearing up what is currently in the charter, which is a little bit, which is incorrect. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so we have the two week period. I did not hear anything from anybody. So it's, uh, I'm ready to vote. So is there a motion? Or is there a motion that we amend the traffic ordinance to update the term and late fee listed for the online renewal of annual parking permit? Janet Stone McWiggin, I second. All those in favor, Frank Carlos, yes. Or in Raven, yes. Janet Stone McWiggin, yes. Okay, the last one. Great, thank you. Thank you. And the second one is um, regarding residential um, parking permits. Uh, I'm proposing a triennial thing. Um, it was initially, you know, an annual thing, and that was taking, you know, a toll on both the residents and the staff. So making it two year was helpful, but also you have to realize that that's also in conjunction with the annual permits, which is like 4,000 plus, and the residential about 800 strong. So, um, and we also did some research where we looked into the lease agreements they're usually at least two years and we always see some you know amendment extending it so i think going a third year um is, is a good thing for us and it wouldn't cost us i would spread there is an added uh, expense by the vendor to bringing down the system bringing up so we could spread that out for another year so all in all um uh, and it's 35 and not 36 dollars so they save a dollar but um i think all in all it, it's a worthwhile you know thing to consider Thank you. Yeah, one of the newspapers I won't name actually had a, a headline that actually said we were made it sound like we were raising the fees. <clears throat> I won't mention names, but uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's a good deal, and, and certainly uh, this is a uh, well, really accepted. So thank you. I motion that we approve the amendment to the traffic ordinance to update the term and fee for residential parking permits. Janet Stomach, we did I second. Favor, Fred, can we see us? Lauren Raven, yes. Janet Stomach, we did yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I look forward to getting the sign paper. Thank you. <laughs> have a great, great day. Okay, new business. Do we have Katie? She's going to be remote. Okay. Katie DeLuca will be presenting the request for an endorsement for the proposed municipal opt-out from the 
minimum parking as accessory apartment provisions of Connecticut Public Act 2129. Um, hold on, let me, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I don't see. I'm, I'm here, Jenny. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi, good, good morning, everybody. Um, I am Katie DeLuca, and I am the town planner, and I'm here this morning to discuss Connecticut Public Act 2129. It's legislation that standardizes requirements for accessory dwelling units throughout the state. Uh, it became effective on January 1st, 2021, and it establishes default provisions that allow for the construction of accessory apartments on lots accompanying single family homes, unless, unless a municipality chooses to opt out of that provision and they have to do that before January 1st, 2023. Um, the legislation also places limits or restrictions on other conditions of approval including not limited to familial occupancy, as of right processing, unit size, and requiring the unit to be affordable. Um, Greenwich has had as of right accessory apartment regulations on the books that substantially comply with this new law for the last 40 years. Changes were made within the last year to actually allow more than the minimum size requirements for the units in an effort to promote them within the community. We differ in two areas from the Public Act, and therefore, like many other towns in Connecticut, we are pursuing the opt-out provision. The first area is parking. Under PA 2129, um, the, the, it restricts the parking requirement to no more than one parking space for each studio or one bedroom dwelling unit. Um, or more than two parking spaces for each dwelling with two or more bedrooms. Our local regulations are based on the overall bedroom count and would require slightly more than the state law. Um, it's important that we retain our own local regulations to reflect the low av availability of on-street on parking in much of the town, particularly where we have narrow streets in the higher density zones. Further, parking vehicles on site lessens traffic congestion and increases safety under these circumstances. So we think it's important to opt out of that area. The second area we differ is that the state statutes require that no accessory apartment should be required to be an affordable unit. Greenwich allows accessory apartments as of right as long as they are occupied by tenants who are senior or disabled or affordable, meaning to people earning 80% or below of local state area median income. While the new law appears designed to provide for increased housing opportunities in all Connecticut municipalities, which is commendable, we are best positioned to address the housing needs of our residents and create regulations both based on our own local demographics housing conditions and economic circumstances. Specifically, our regulations allow for greater flexibility and diversity of housing options for existing and new residents. They have the potential to significantly increase our housing affordability and enable seniors to stay in town as they age, both of which were stated as clear needs within our 2019 Plan of Conservation and Development. In fact, the Connecticut General Statutes under 8-2 require that our zoning regulations be in accordance with our own plan of conservation and development. So opting out of these two provisions of the state law would retain that conformance. Um, we did hold a discussion item for this, for public input on this opt out at our July 19th regular meeting and we had no objection whatsoever. Um, we are also holding a public hearing at 10 o'clock on Friday morning on August 5th. Um, in addition to the required public hearing under the state law, um, in order to opt out, each municipality must also obtain a two-third vote from their legislative body. And we are scheduled to be before the RTM in, in September. Um, and that's why we're here before you today to ask for your endorsement um, of this opt-out. So with that, um, I hope that gave you enough flavor in addition to what we submitted for the agenda. You had any questions? Thank you, Katie. Any questions? Sorry, I have to get back to my microphone. We're passing around my laptop so you can see me. Um, <laughs> do you need us to vote today or can we wait till after August 5th and still be in time for the RTM meeting? Yes, as, um, as long as, right, it, it would be good to have your endorsement. We do not need the vote today. Um, it would be great to have it, however, 
um, simply just because we'd like to have the endorsement and be able to add it into our materials for the RTM. Um, it's, it's again, um, something that we've had in public input sessions on um, and we have another session in, in August. We're not expecting anyone to come to that. We have actually um, in the discussions with the RTM when we were reviewing the affordable housing plan, this came up and people are very, very supportive of the opt out. We've not heard any opposition at all from RTM members. Thank you. Yes, I have not heard the opposition. I know how I would vote on this, so I'm okay taking it today. Um, I think I, I mean, I would rather have a second read. Uh, likewise, I don't see why I wouldn't be supportive of this. Uh, but, you know, all, all things the same, I would rather, I'd rather have a second read. Okay, my colleagues want a second read, but this will do, absolutely do that. We'll, we'll get that, get you a permanent vote, I think, in two weeks. Yeah, I'm, I'm supportive, just to be clear, but yeah, just because we do, do second reads for all these major things, just to be consistent, but you, you have my support, if that helps. Thanks, Katie. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Have a great day. Any comments at all? We're not public. I actually, sorry, actually, this is Jenny Lark. I'm, I'm also a resident. I'm just going to quickly ask a question about, oh, I just realized Katie already jumped off. But for accessory, um, for accessory apartments, is part of this too, like um, granny, like if, if it's a family and they want to have their, thinking about these things, <laughs> you know. Is, are these accessory, and so I guess that's the over 65. So if the person is over 65, Whatever the um, senior. Yes, it, I, it's I sixty-two. Okay. And the good news is that these restrictions, um, we we have changed the rules such that the restrictions for the accessory apartment are such that someone who's 62 years of age or older or even on the affordable side can live either in the main house or in the accessory dwelling unit. So um, that, that I think adds additional flexibility and promotes these units further within the community. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Jen. Seeing no other comments, we're going to adjourn. Board meeting so moved. Janet Stuart McWig and I second. All of my favorite, Dr. Lillos, yes. Boring rating, yes. Janet Stuart McWig and yes. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Appreciate that. That's probably the question. Okay.